Hello my dear students this is your host Dr. Syed Bakar. Today's class we will be learning about uh, anaerobes and their cultivation techniques. Along with that we will study about the cultivation of different types of microorganisms. Let's jump onto the video now. Anaerobic microorganisms are microorganisms that thrive in the environment devoid of oxygen. They live inside the environment where there is no oxygen or very less, less oxygen is present. Some of the best examples for anaerobic microorganisms are Clostridium, Propenibacterium, Bactroid, Fusobacterium, etc. Anaerobic means the organism which doesn't require or doesn't love oxygen in their environment. Some of the microorganisms are also present in your gut. There, under the anaerobic condition, they try to carry out their metabolic activities. Obligate anaerobes. Obligate anaerobes are the bacteria which cannot survive in the presence of oxygen. It's completely obligate that they reject oxygen. For them, oxygen is toxic and a small exposure of oxygen can lead to their death and damage. And the best example is Clostridium species and some of the other common examples are the actinomycetes which live inside the soil and gastrointestinal tract. And these microorganisms are clinically significant because they cause gastrointestinal infections. Facultative an anaerobes are the microorganism where they can switch from a rich oxygen environment to anaerobic conditions and they can grow in both presence as well as in the absence of oxygen. In the absence of oxygen, they typically use fermentation or anaerobic respiration to generate energy. The best example is E. coli which lives inside the human intestine. Aerotolerant anaerobes. These are the microorganism or the bacteria that can tolerate the presence of oxygen but they do not use it for their metabolic processes. They typically rely on fermentation process. Unlike facultative anaerobes, they do not switch to aerobic respiration in the presence of oxygen. Lactobacillus species are one of the best examples for aerotolerant anaerobic bacteria. Other examples are Campylobacter. Some of the characteristics and adaptation of anaerobic bacteria are metabolism. Anaerobic bacteria use fermentation or anaerobic respiration to generate energy in the absence of oxygen. These processes involve the breakdown of organic compounds without the use of oxygen as a final electron acceptor. And obligate anaerobes lack enzymes like catalysis and superoxide dismutase which are necessary for detoxifying reactive oxygen species. Facultative anaerobes and aerotolerant anaerobes possess these enzymes but can adjust their metabolism based on the availability of oxygen. Hab habitat Anaerobic bacteria are found in various environmental conditions including soil, sediments, human gastrointestinal tract and other anaerobic niches. Some species are also associated with infection as they can proliferate in the absence of oxygen in tissues. Diversity, when it comes to diversity, anaerobic bacteria are taxonomically diverse and belong to different uh, bacterial phyla. Common examples, Clostridium, Propenobacterium, Fusobacterium, Bacteroids, etc. Clinical significance, as we can see based on their uh, uh, habitat, and their characteristics, they can cause various infections. For example, the best example is uh, acne. Propenobacterium 
is the microorganism which causes acne or pimples on the skin. So how to culture this anaerobic microorganism in the laboratory? In order to grow them, we have a specialized anaerobic chamber which maintains the anaerobic condition by decreasing the oxygen level and increasing the carbon dioxide and other gases level so that the oxygen level is always low. Under this anaerobic condition, the microorganism, anaerobic microorganism grow, grow luxuriantly. Culture media. There are different culture media used for different anaerobic microorganisms. For example, reinforced clostridial medium RCM is commonly used to grow the clostridium species. It contains peptone yeast extract as a nitrogen source, sodium chloride for maintaining the osmotic balance, dextrose or glucose as a carbon and energy source. This these combination of ingredients supports a wide range of anaerobic microorganisms, especially clostridium species. Blood agar is a very good example to grow anaerobic microorganism. The, the media enriched with sheep or horse blood 5 to 10 percent provides essential growth factors for anaerobic bacterial species. Temperature. The most common or a range of temperature where anaerobic microorganisms grow is between 35 and 37 degrees Celsius depending upon the type of anaerobic species. pH. When it comes to pH, the optimal pH range for growth of anaerobic microorganisms can vary depending upon the specific species. Anaerobic bacteria have adapted to diverse environment and their pH preferences may influence by the surroundings or by the environment where they specifically <coughs> live. The optimal range for anaerobic microorganism has found to be 6.5 to 7 pH. Gas replacement. It is a type of uh, uh, atmosphere where the oxygen is replaced by different gases such as nitrogen, carbon dioxide, hydrogen, etc. These mixture of gases uh, displaces the oxygen from the environment and remove the oxygen completely so that it favors the growth of the anaerobic microorganisms. Some of the common mixture include 85% of nitrogen, 15% of uh, hydrogen mixture can supplement or help the micro anaerobic bacteria to grow. Carbon dioxide. Majorly carbon dioxide helps or creates slightly acidic condition which may be favorable for the growth of certain anaerobic bacteria. Well, the carbon dioxide in the gas mixture has always been beneficial in order to grow an anaerobic microorganisms along with uh, hydrogen. So as we discussed some of the common anaerobic gas mixtures are 85% of nitrogen, 10% of hydrogen, 5% of carbon dioxide, 90% of nitrogen, 5% of hydrogen and 5% of carbon dioxide. These mixtures are supplemented with anaerobic chambers to reduce or remove the oxygen completely so that it can favor the growth of anaerobic bacteria. In order to uh, monitor its growth, monitoring the gases is also very much essential which is equipped with inbuilt with the gas. Uh, the chamber anaerobic chamber so that it will be maintaining the different uh, levels of different gases and use of anaerobic indicators especially incorporated in the media to signal the presence of oxygen for example resasurin turns pink in the presence of oxygen resasurin is a dye which turns pink when you add in the media 
in the presence of oxygen. So moving on to the next next topic of your syllabus, accessing non-culturable bacteria. There are certain bacteria in the environment which is very difficult to culture in a laboratory scale by using the normal media. So hence they require some of the special care. Uh, we will list out what are the um, parameters we use to culture those non-culturable bacteria. So enrichment media. Enrichment media is nothing but a specialized media which promotes the growth of specific species of bacteria upon isolation. There are most of the bacteria in the soil which doesn't grow on a normal nutrient agar media. So enrichment in those specialized condition we use and we use enrichment media. Metagenomics is one of the applicative uh, tool which we use to study the unculturable um, bacteria from the environment. There are certain bacteria which are not cultured at all with artificial supplement media. Those bacteria are called as non culturable bacteria and they are analyzed using metagenomics wherein we use the complete uh, soil sample and carry out the metagenomics and we isolate their DNA completely and by using the metagenomics tool we blast their DNA sequence to check what are the non-culturable bacteria present. The next in the list is microscopic technique. Advanced microscopy techniques such as fluorescence in situ hybridization which is abbreviated as FISH is used to visualize and identify non-culturable bacteria present in the sample. Along with that co-culturing. Co-culturing can also be related to synergistic effort where an attempt is made to co-culture the bacteria with a known strain that supports the growth of other bacteria. Some bacteria lay on the interaction with other species for their growth. It is also called a synergistic effect. And the next is molecular techniques. The use of polymerase chain reacting PCR and other molecular tools to detect and identify non-culturable bacteria based on their genetic material. And some of the buffers present in the media also plays a very essential role in order to maintain the maintain and stabilize the environment in order to grow the bacteria. It creates a controlled environment for the microbial cultures to grow. It maintaining a stable pH is critical for accurate representation of bacterial physiology and enables a researcher to cultivate and study microorganisms under the condition that closely mimic their natural habitats or specific environmental requirements. pH is not only designated, uh, the buffers are not only designated for pH, there are different buffers which plays an important role. For example, pH buffer. This maintains the stable pH by incorporating buffers like phosphate or bicarbonate into the culture media. Salt buffers include salts in the media to maintain the osmotic balance preventing fluctuation that may affect the growth of bacteria. Nutrient buffer, they use nutrient buffer to stabilize the availability of essential nutrients in the media both micro as well as macronutrients. Temperature buffers it controls the temperature with appropriate buffers to prevent sudden changes from natural environment to the artificial condition. Next, let us move on to cultivation of microorganism, which is one of the important procedure which is highlighted in your syllabus. Microorganisms cultivation is a fundamental process in microbiology. In it enables to study the various uh, diversity, various uh, microorganisms and their diversity from different habitats. 
Cultivation involves providing a controlled artificial environment with the specific nutrients along with the various parameters such as temperature, pH, uh, the conditions for growth, controlled atmosphere, etc. In laboratory, we commonly use agar-based solid media or liquid uh, broth in order to foster the proliferation of diverse microorganisms. The factors like oxygen levels, humidity and incubation time plays a very crucial role in order to regulate the microbial physiology. And the growing uh, container is also important. In large scale, we use fermenters and at a laboratory scale, we use conical flask in order to grow the microorganisms. Cul cultivation of fungi. fungi. Fungal cultivation is a process where you grow a fungi under a controlled aseptic condition. And you can grow fungi both in solid as well as in liquid media. Some of the most commonly used uh, media to grow fungi is potato dextrose agar along with that Sebados dextrose agar is widely used in order to cultivate fungi. In CDA, Sebados dextrose agar, dextrose and peptone acts as a carbon and nitrogen sources. Whereas in liquid media, the same uh, composition is used in a broth medium. Steps, some of the common steps in used in fungal cultivation is inoculation of mycelia or spore. As we all know that uh, fungi is quite different from the bacteria. They grow in the form of mycelia. So the spores or the mycelial fragments are introduced or inoculated onto the selective media under aseptic conditions and it is incubated at a room temperature. Majority of fungi likes to grow at a room temperature. And the optimal growth can be only visible. Uh, it is one of uh, visible during seven to fifteen days. It is. It requires longer period in comparison with the bacteria, which starts growing immediately after the inoculation. Whereas in fungi, it takes much more time in order to grow and multiply. As I discussed, a room temperature is. Uh, favorable for majority of fungus to grow. The pH, fungi typically grow at a neutral, the acidic to neutral pH. They love growing at between this 5.6 and 8.6.8 .8 range. Whereas uh, oxygen requirement, fungi exhibit diverse oxygen requirement ranging from obligate aerobes to obligate anaerobes. The culture condition must match the oxygen preference based on the type of fungi species, fungal species, what we are growing or cultivating. Some of the specific media used for fungal cultivation is PDA, cornmeal media, malt extract agar, along with sabados agar. And cultivating fungi is very much essential in order to understand their biology because most of the fungi are capable of producing secondary metabolites which is having industrial importance in the field of medicine, agriculture and biotechnology. In the field of agriculture, most of the fungus are used as biofertilizers. And actinomycetes are, when it comes to actinomycetes, the con condition and the culture methods are completely way different in compared to bacteria and fungi. As we all know, actinomycetes are filamentous bacteria that share characteristics of both bacteria and fungi. And they are renowned for producing variety of secondary metabolites having biological activity. The majority of antibiotics are produced by actinomycetes. Coming to the cultivation of actinomycetes, they have a specialized media in order which which supports their growth and multiplication. Some of the common uh, media used are starch casein agar and ISP media, International Streptomyces 
project media which uh, supplements the growth of streptomyces here <coughs> coming back to the inoculation inoculate inoculation part is they inoculate the actively growing uh, actinomyces into the media if you are planning to isolate the actinomyces uh, from the soil sample then you follow the serial dilution process and the serially diluted uh, sample is plated onto this starch casein or ISP media which uh, supports the growth of actinomyces. Single colonies are isolated by streaking or other techniques as we have discussed in our previous classes and the incubation temperature is even they prefer growing at uh, room temperature. Majority of actinomycetes uh, loves to grow at a room temperature. Subculturing, when it comes to subculturing, subculture the actively growing colonies into the fresh media periodically in order to maintain the viability of the culture. And along with that, uh, actinomycetes are very diverse they produce different colors, different texture and their morphological characteristics are completely different than compared to the bacteria and fungi. Actinomyces typically form aerial uh, mycelium and produces spores which is the silent feature of fungi. When it comes to environmental conditions, actinomyces prefer environment with moderate moisture and uh, pH conditions are between acidic to neutral in the range of uh, 6.5 to 7.5. Aeration, most of the actinomycetes are aerobic in nature and some of the actinomycetes are uh, grow in anaerobic uh, conditions. In order to grow micro uh, actinomycetes in the laboratory, we need to maintain some of the special techniques like uh, special media, downstreaming processing, uh, upstream, upstreaming processing. Also, if your target is to extract or separate uh, the secondary metabolites produced by actinomycetes. And in order to cultivate Algae, the cultivation of algae involves creating an atmosphere, a controlled atmosphere that provides optimal condition for their growth. Algae are photosynthetic organisms that can be cultivated for various purposes including uh, single cell protein, biofuel production and they are also used in wastewater treatment and most and algae is also used in order to produce large scale of valuable compounds such as omega-3 fatty acids. The overview of uh, cult cultivation of algae are selection of algal strain. Choose algal strain based on their application or based on your area of interest and different species have a different uh, growth requirements and, dif and grow at different uh, um, parameters. Uh, the suitable media used is it contains uh, essential nutrients like nitrogen, phosphorus, sulfur and micronutrients. Various uh, media formation is followed. Bolts, basal media or F2 media are commonly used in the laboratory in order to grow the alkyl strains. This exclusively supplement uh, favors the growth of algae. And during the inoculation process, we need to inoculate the cultured media with algal cell. This can be done using a strata culture spore or algal, algal cell from previously cultured uh, batch. Photobioreactors or open ponds are usually used in order to culture the algae. And light, some of the algae requires light for photosynthesis. And hence, uh, we need to provide intense light and uh, LEDs or natural sunlights are used in uh, as a source of light. 
The most common temperature, the temperature range is between 20 to 30 degrees Celsius. Uh, we need to provide aeration by mixing, uh, by mixing process so that the algae are exposed to nutrient and light uniformly. This prevents sedimentation and enhances the growth. And the algae doesn't uh, sediment itself to the bottom. Harvesting of algae, harvesting of algae when it, they reach their desired biomass concentration, harvesting method includes centrifugation, filtration, flocculation, etc. The post-harvest uh, process uh, depends on uh, the type of algae what you are uh, um, trying to cultivate and uh, the type of product of what you are looking for. The environmental factors play a very important uh, role here. The pH, the typical pH range is 7 to 9. The nutrient concentration, uh, we need to monitor uh, regular nutrient concentration in the media in order to support its continuous growth until it reaches its peak of growth. Application as we discussed algae can be a promising alternative resources for biofuel, biodiesel, bioethanol production. They are used in order to treat wastewater by absorbing nutrient and pollutant and they can also used as a bioremediating agent and they are also used in food and nutraceutical industries in order to produce single cell protein, omega-3 fatty acids, vitamins, etc. They are also used in carbon capture. Algae can uh, convert the carbon dioxide during photosynthesis in order to produce oxygen. So cultivating algae is a versatile and sustainable practice with a wide range of application. So moving on to the next uh, yeast cultivation which also involves creating a specific condition that promotes the growth and reproduction of yeast. Yeast is a typical fungi is widely used in various applications including baking industry, bioethanol production etc. Here is a general overview of uh, yeast cultivation step. First, we need to select the, a specific yeast strain. For example, uh, Saccharomyces cerevisiae is used in the baking industry. The preparation of culture media. Yeast requires nutrient-rich media containing carbon source, example glucose, nitrogen source, vitamins and minerals. Some of the common media uh, include yeast, extract peptone dextrose ypd and synthetic defined media inoculation of uh, culture here we need to inoculate inoculate uh, actively growing yeast cell uh, very small amount of starter culture is enough in order to uh, to inoculate the fermenting media the incubation time or incubation temperature varies depending upon the type of species but the typical range is between 25 degrees Celsius to 30 degrees Celsius. Aeration, aeration process. In order to provide aeration and agitation in the culture media, we need to ensure the uniform distribution of nutrient and prevent settling of each cell to the bottom. Uh, fermentation condition for specific application like uh, bioethanol production transition the yeast cell to fermentation stage. This involves providing condition conducive to produce of desired products such as ethanol and carbon dioxide. Harvesting. The harvesting yeast cells when they reach the desired biomass concentration various methods such as centrifugation and filtration are widely in practice. So, the environmental factors which in influence the growth, as we discussed, uh, Saccharomyces cerevisiae grow well at temperature between 25 to 30 degrees Celsius and the pH range is uh, mostly acidic. Here they require a typical pH 4 to between 4 to 6 and nutrient concentration we need to ensure that uh, 
all the nutrients are intact while uh, you are culturing yeast the application part yeast is used in fermentation and baking industries in bioethanol production yeast is utilized in fermentation of sugar to produce ethanol in bioethanol plant in biotechnological aspects they are widely used in recom in produce in production of enzymes recombinant proteins and other pharmaceuticals with this my dear students uh, i'll conclude this class we have successfully completed uh, the microbial techniques the first part of your syllabus especially third semester bsc i wish you all a very good luck if you have any doubt you can contact me anytime good luck